just say XB, and then we can even say something like image viewer. Okay, so somebody who doesn't know what XB is would read this and know that it's an image viewer at least. And then we can say what the command is to run it, which is just XB. Uh, we don't want to run it in a terminal. That, that would be like running it in like the, like from the text line prompt, from the command line terminal. We don't need to do that because XB has its own graphical user interface. Okay, so I'm just going to click save here. All right, I'm going to minimize this window now and now go out here to our main menu. So we go to our main menu, we go to favorites, and now we can see it says XV image viewer. I can click on that, and now we get that intro screen again. I could click my right, right mouse button for the menu and so on. But that's another way to run the XV program is you just run it from uh, the, the main menus, uh, from, from this start menu down here, and instead of just having to type the, the command at the command line. Okay, so that's that's the basics of RPM. That's what it looks like when you install something without a hitch. All right, we go, we go to and install the software, and everything that the XV program needs was already on our system because it just went through the installation fine. Uh, what we're going to talk about next is what happens when uh, you go to install something, and there's some dependency, there's some library or some other program that that needs to be installed before this program can be installed and run correctly. Okay, so that's what we'll talk about next. Actually, before we do that, let me just show you one more thing here. Uh, the way that you uninstall a piece of software with the RPM command, you would just say RPM minus E XV. So you wouldn't even have to give it all this version number. You just give it the name of the piece of software. And you do that, and I'll hit enter here to uninstall it. And now it's uninstalled. If I did a man on XV, it's not there anymore. If I just type XV, it says, sorry, there is no such file or directory. Okay, so that, that just kind of gives you an idea what the RPM command does um, and, and how it works without any hitches. And like I said, now we're going to talk about what happens when there are some dependencies that are unmet. Now let's uh, go and install, get some software from another source. This time we're going to get software from uh, rhn.redhat.com. RHN stands for the Red Hat Network. And the Red Hat Network is something that you can sign up for for free if you have a Red Hat system. And then basically what you do is you log in and you can download software from their site. Um, ideally, the way, that this is, the, the way that this could work is that it would look, work a lot like the apt-get command in Debian. That it would be able to download software and also all the various libraries that, that are needed and everything else. Okay, so when I log in here, I'm going to go to entitlements, which is uh, what, what I'm allowed or entitled to download. All right, and uh, they've got my machine name here. And basically, when you sign up for this service, uh, you know, it's all free and everything, and you sign up for it, you run this program on your system and send uh, the Red Hat Network some information about your machine. Okay, and this information you send it tells the Red Hat Network uh, what software you already have installed on your system, what version of Red Hat you're running, what kind of computer you have, that kind of stuff. And then when when you go to do an installation, it has more knowledge about what uh, dependencies are unmet by if they go to install this. And ideally, you'd be able to install this stuff uh, more easily, just with like a one click, like you could on like a Windows or a Macintosh operating system. It's so easy to install software on those operating systems. And so uh, here, I'm going to go to install new packages. You can also go to upgrade packages or look at the packages that are already installed on your system. I want to install a new package. And what we're going to do here is uh, go down and look at this uh, name here, and we're going to type a Apache in there. So we're going to filter it out, but all the um, pieces of software that have to do with Apache, and I'm going to come down here, and there's the actual web server, the Apache web server. There's a development kit, there's a manual, uh, there's a configuration tool, and so on. I just want the actual web server. And then if, as I go down here, it says you can install selected packages or download selected packages. Now, if you install the selected packages, uh, what's going to happen here is that it's, they're, they're just going to take full control at this point and try to install. Uh, what, what's happened to me is that sometimes they've uh, scheduled it. I guess maybe their bandwidth was, was uh, being t was too high right now. They were downloading too much stuff, so they just scheduled me for a couple hours later. That kind of stuff. I'm just going to click on download selected packages just so that we get the actual package. And you can see here that it's actually a tar file that we're downloading. Uh, once we get the tar file downloaded, then uh, you know we'll see. It says here the package that you have selected will be in the newly created RHN packages directory directory beneath your current directory. All right. Okay, so I'll download the selected packages. Uh, again, save this file to disk. Uh, we're in the slash temp directory. Um, let me see if I can uh, save it to slash opt here since I'm logged in as the root user now. So I'll do that and I'll save. Okay, and now it's going through here. And I'm just going to pause the video while this is working. All right, so now the download's complete, and now we'll be able to go up to the op directory here, do a listing, and there's rhnpackages.tar. 
So we're going to open it up. And you notice back here, they tell you how to do it. Tar, uh, XVF, RHN packages tar. Typically, that minus sign they have in front of the XVF is not necessary for tar, but uh, you can probably put it in on most versions of tar still. So uh, tar, XVF, RHN packages tar. And now if we do a listing, uh, there's this directory called RHN packages. So we'll go in there and do a listing, and there's the Apache RPM uh, file. Now we'll install this. We'll do the RPM minus IVH Apache. If I spell it right, there we go. And now I'll hit enter. And now it says failed dependencies. There's this library, libmm.so.11, is needed by Apache 1.3.22-6. So now let's try and satisfy this dependency. All right, so our goal here is to find this libmm.so.11 library. All right, and if we get that library installed on our computer, then we'll be able to install Apache. Now, here's a little tip for you if you're a novice or an intermediate user. You're not going to find this library just like in, in plain text somewhere, and you're just going to download that library. Okay, what you need to do is you need to find a package, like the MM package, and if you install the MM package, then you'll get libmm.so.11 as a result of installing that package. And if you do a search on Google, uh, like maybe you can't determine that just from looking at this. Well, if you do a search on Google for libmm.so.11, you'll find something out there that gives you some information about what package provides this library. That's what we're looking for. What package provides uh, the libmm.so.11 library? And that's the MM package. So what we're going to do is open our web browser up again. I'm just going to go back to rpmfind.net to search for this MM package. I'm just going to go in there, type MM, hit enter, and now we've uh, hopefully found some stuff here. It found 82 RPMs for MM. So, uh, uh, you know, there's all sorts of uh, RPMs out here. Some of them have MDK in them. They're for Mandrake. Uh, they'll probably work on your system if you don't have Mandrake, but uh, I like to just stay away from stuff that, that is somewhat specific to some distribution. I like generic stuff. So here, uh, here's one for the i386. It's the shared memory library. That's what MM is. So I'm going to click on that. All right. And I'm just going to pause while this is downloading. All right, so I've downloaded it to the temp directory. Okay, I'm going to uh, close this window, and then I'm going to bring up my uh, web browser here, or my command line window. All right, and now what I'll do is I'm going to copy uh, from the temp directory that mmrpm file, and I'm going to copy it to my local working directory, and I can do that by just specifying a period there. And now if I do an ls, you'll see the mmrpm uh, files in here, and now we're just going to install it. rpm, ivh, mm, all the way, and I'll tab it and, and just complete it. Okay, now when we install this file, keep your fingers crossed, because what we really don't want to see is that it fails to meet these dependencies, and we have to go out and look for more stuff to install. All right, but, but this, this is, it's not too big a deal. If you have to do it once or twice, it kind of, it's not such a big deal. Once you have to do it like five or six times, it starts to get to be a hassle, and then you really appreciate like, you know, downloading stuff with just like one click. Okay, um, so here we're just going to hit enter here and keep your fingers crossed. All right, it installed. Okay, so, so now the thing installed, it installed very quickly. Now what we want to do is we want to install Apache, uh, and I'm going to do that one now. I'm going to hit enter. And now Apache installed. All right, so now we've installed Apache. We went out and actually met that dependency by downloading the package, installing the package, and now the dependency is met and we could install Apache. All right, good job. So, so the, the moral of the story here is just that, you know, there, it's nice to have software programs that go out and do this stuff for you. Like the Debian package manager probably would have taken care of this with the apt-get routine. Um, and the Red Hat network, if we had just like scheduled a download and let the Red Hat network do the download for us, uh, that might have worked perfectly well too. I don't know. I, I, when I tried to do that, it just scheduled me for tomorrow or something, and I didn't want to wait to record that. Okay. So, so the goal, the idea here is though that even if you have that software on your side, occasionally it doesn't work. It's unable to meet the dependencies, and you're going to go have to go out and do it on your own. And that's a really important part of installing software in Linux is trying to determine, you know, how to get these various libraries and stuff. And, and I just tried to give you a little bit of a tip today to to do that so that we can install the Apache web server. All right, so, so that, that's, a, that's a good lesson for you to, to uh, download the dependencies. And now we're just going to play around with Apache a little bit since we just installed it. The first thing that I want to show you about Apache is just how to start the web server. So what we can do here is we can go to slash Etsy, and then in, in, under, under slash Etsy is a subdirectory called init.d, and in there is a script called httpd. 
HTTPD that stands for the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Daemon. And the Hypertext Transfer Protocol is the protocol that's used uh, when you use the web browser over the internet to look at some web page. That's the protocol that you're using.